Shalom, beloved. A word. One of the things I wanted to share, trying to turn this up. One second. We're in the book of Daniel. We're with Belshazzar. Daniel 5, starting at the first verse. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of Yah, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the, cell, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's continent was changed and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smote one against the other. Belshazzar. A thousand of his lords is what he invited to this great feast. A thousand of his lords. Everything that we're reading, brothers and sisters, is representative of something that occurred and of something that's coming, of something that's occurring, and of a final judgment. How so? Let's go to the beginning of what he did. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. He made a great feast thousand of his lord. There's going to be a great celebration. There's going to be a thousand year reign. But Belshazzar won't be there. But what he's doing is representative of something that's coming. A thousand of his lord. Like a thousand year reign. Whilst he tasted the wine, he commanded to bring the golden and silver vessel which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines might drink. They brought him. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, End of stone. You know, one of the things that's very interesting that Belshazzar did, gold, silver, brass, iron, just like Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Gold, silver, brass, iron. He said he was honoring the God of gold, of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. But let's look at the gold, silver, brass, and iron first before we get to the wood and the stone. All of these things he knew were in the temple of the Most High. All of these things that he took. And he raised a toast to no God. Gold, silver, brass, iron, 
just like that great statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw. He knew what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He knew the story. He knew about that statue that represents those kingdoms. Those kingdoms that think themselves gods, think themselves so great. They dishonor the Most High. They dishonor the people of the Most High. And he raised the two with who? A thousand of his lords. That doesn't even count his wives and concubines. A thousand. Hmm. Like a thousand year reign. There's going to be a great feast. When he did it, Gold, silver, brass, and iron. Mm -hmm. Honoring those no gods because they are kingdoms unto themselves. The ones he's raising a toast to. With a thousand of his lords. But he's got the vessels from the house of the Most High. He's also praising wood and stone. The wood and the precious stones that were in the temple. See, the wood, that was on the post in the temple. Many things were overlaid with gold, but the wooden post that held up the linen curtain that surrounded the court of the temple of the Most High God. Hmm. What did the wood the wood represented man and Yeshua. The wood represented our weakness and his strength in coming in the form of flesh and saving us. When he raised a toast, he didn't first of all understand the power of the true God that he was raising that toast to. And stone, those precious stones, In that same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against a candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. And then the king's countenance changed. He was a proud man. He knew where those vessels came from. He knew what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. But he was a proud man. He was representing an age and a time. That's why he was praising the gods of gold and silver, brass and iron, just like that statue. Because they think themselves gods, those nations that rule. But that wood, what did the wood represent? That wood that came out of that temple represented Yeshua and Yashavrat, our redemption. It stood for the weakness of man and the strength of man through the salvation of Yeshua. Those wood coats that held up the curtain of the temple. Now, he said gold, silver, brass, iron, wood, and stone. There's somewhere else that those same things are found. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is before many, many Tekoon Farsen come. Before that. Because the same judgment that he was about to receive is coming somewhere else. The same items, not only from the past that Nebuchadnezzar had in that statue. There's something else. Brothers and sisters, we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And now, we're going to talk about Babylon. Babylon. Hmm. What was found in Babylon? Babylon, the plagues that come upon Babylon. Okay. 
Therefore, her plague shall come in one day, death, mourning, and famine. I'm in Be uh, Revelation chapter 18, verse 8. Now I'm going to drop down. To verse 12, chapter 18, verse 12. And the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stone, pearls, fine linen, purple and silk, scarlet, all fine iron, wood, all manner of vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of the most precious wood, and of brass and of iron and of marble, of cinnamon and odors and ointment and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and the souls of men. Who? Who? That kingdom. That kingdom. I remember the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, here's Belshazzar. He's having this feast. Here's Belshazzar. He's having Raising a tool. But there's another kingdom. A kingdom that's part of the gold, the silver, the brass, the iron that he's toasting to. That kingdom of iron. And what it held in it. I just read Book of Revelations chapter 18. The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stone. Pearl, silk, fine linen, wood, scarlet, all manner of ivory and vessels of most precious wood and brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts, sheep, horses, chariots, slaves, and the souls of men. The souls of men. Here's Belshazzar. He drank wine and praised the gods of gold, silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. And in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick. I'm back in the book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 5. In the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the walls of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that broke. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smoked one against the other. And the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be a third ruler in the kingdom. Well, brothers and sisters, we know that Daniel came. I'm going to skip down. Daniel came. Okay. And what did he see? Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Yes, my dear, yes. Yes, my dear, yes. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Now he's talking to Belshazzar. He's telling him how he knew about Nebuchadnezzar. How he was driven from the face of the sons of men. And his heart was made like a beast. Then he's talking straight to Belshazzar. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. Do we live in a nation that knows, that claims itself to be God-fearing and God we trust? And yet, what does it worship? Who does it design? Let's see. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart, though thou knewest all this, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and their concubines have drunk wine in them, and has praised the gods of silver, of gold, of brass, of iron, of wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whom, and the Yah in whose hand 
thy breath is, and who are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified? Mm. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tekel, tekel, um, fasten. This is the interpretation of the thing. Now, you got to understand something, brother. There were actually four letters. Four letters. We hear a word because the letters are a complete thought. Okay? Many, many, tekel, tek. I'm sorry. Many, many, tekel, um, fasten. There were four letters. In the Hebrew, a letter is actually a complete thought. Beta, house of, laham, bread. It's a complete thought. Beta, laham, house of bread. I'm just giving you the letters. That's why Yeshua came into Bethlehem, the living bread that come down from heaven. Beta, house of, laham, bread. Beta, laham. House of bread, living bread, came down to Bethlehem. Many, many tekel and fasting. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Remember, it was said twice. Many, many, it was said double. It was agreed on. It was determined. Many eternal. Okay. Many, many tekel um fasting. God has numbered thy kingdom. That's many and finished. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Father, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Middies and the Persians. Right now, brothers and sisters, the question is, can you read the writing on the wall? Like Daniel did. Can you read the writing on the wall? You've got a nation of crazy gold, silver, brass, wood, and stone above the Most High. You've got a nation of iron, wood, brass, iron, silver, gold, stone for the lives of slaves and souls. Can you read the writing on the wall? Many, many tekel uns boss. And he was in Babylon. That's where Belshazzar was in Babylon. A thousand of his lords. And the return was death. Hmm. But because he was dishonoring the God of Yashorel. Now we reverse it. That great feast that that proud and ignorant king had, that blasphemous king had with a thousand of his lords, we're going to go to a feast and dwell peacefully with his shoe for a thousand years. Many, many tekel and fast. Can you see the writing on the wall below? He was in Babylon, a proud man. What does it talk about that proud king? Thy pride has deceived thee. Isn't that what it says in Obadiah? Here is Belshazzar doing the same thing. And the judgment. Many, many tekel in fast. And the things that he prayed, the gods of gold, silver, brass, iron, start with those four. It's mirroring that image of those four kingdoms, those four unholy kingdoms that enslaved Yasharev, that were the torment, those four kingdoms. And the wood and the stone. Many, many tekel and fast in Babylon. Yeah. 
Okay. What did he say? Hmm. Many. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Can you see the writing on the wall below? Technically, thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. Hmm. Father, thy kingdom is divided. And given to the Medes and the Persians. Doesn't it talk about the kingdom coming and fighting against Babylon? And don't forget the thousand lords celebrating. Hmm. They weren't celebrating at the end of that. But when many, many Tekoon fast. Is seen on the walls of this Babylon. It's here. We will. We'll have a great feast for a thousand years. Just like in the book of Revelations, chapter 18, when the whole Babylon was judged, and all those same things were found in the judgment. Many, many techie um, oh. and Yasharel, thousand years with his shoes. Yah, in peace. Be encouraged, beloved. Shalom.